Lift your hands to Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Majesty, Majesty, Your grace has found me just as I am, empty-handed but alive in Your hands. Majesty, 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 forever, forever I am changed by Your love. In the presence, In the presence of Your Majesty, one more time. Sing majesty. Sing majesty. Sing majesty. Yeah. majesty. Your, grace Your grace has found me just as I am. Changed by your love, in the presence of your Thank you, Jesus. 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 Out of the lips of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. When your desire becomes, your desire for lifting becomes greater than your desire to know him and to love him, there will be a problem in your Christian life. Believe me when I tell you this. When your desire to love him and to know him becomes less than your desire to be a good preacher and a celebrity, you will be in trouble. One thing have I desired, not to work miracles, one thing have I desired, not just to have results in my life, as important as these things are. One thing have I desired, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Believers, hear me. We must get to a point in our lives where the entirety of our lives is hinged on our love and our passion for Jesus. Not just God, because God means many things. Jesus is that advocate, the image of the invisible God. Are we together now? Yes. In as much as we are here tonight to receive miracles, we are here to celebrate the mighty hand of God. And this he will do. I am telling you in order of priority, more than the focus on miracles or breakthrough or the desire to see our requests come to pass, we must set our eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. You know that song? You know the song? 
Oh dear. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That means the more you focus on Jesus, you will find out that many things you think are worries are not really worries. They are worries to the degree to which your lack of concentration has magnified them. There are many things we call worries today in our lives that are not worries. Believe me when I tell you, they are only worries because our ego made them so. They are worries because our lack of faith made them so. They are worries because our carelessness towards focusing on Jesus made them so. When you are distracted in your focus on Jesus, the devil magnifies every other thing to stop you from that focus. Why would he say to look at the brazen serpent when there were other serpents that were coming to kill them? Would you watch a serpent come to, to kill you and then you wouldn't run away he said don't be distracted at the ones on the ground just lift your eyes and look for as long as you look at that the one on the ground will have no power over you powerful for as long as you can look at him the one on the ground will have no power over you hallelujah So don't come to church expecting to receive miracles minus your encounter with Jesus. Don't come to church to receive a, the grace for a job. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies. But let me tell you, everything becomes profitable in your life when it is with respect to Jesus. Prosperity with respect to Jesus. Lifting with respect to Jesus open doors with respect to Jesus so every for every amen you will shout tonight let your spirit man say amen and let it be with respect to Jesus not amen as the marketing of flesh now receive the grace for favor and you say amen amen means let that money come and let me prove to people that this thing is working is unnecessary Are we together now? When people come to church, many times they are not interested in Jesus. They are interested in the preacher. They are interested in the worshipers. They are interested in the excellence. And that is wonderful. But you, you, you will be surprised how people can start a service from the opening prayer to the grace. And there is nothing Jesus that will cross their minds. You have to discipline your spirit man to get to a point where Jesus becomes the central focus. Thank God for the vessels that he uses, but it is a stupid thing when a messenger claims he is greater than the sender. When you are a messenger, it means that someone gave you a message to deliver. Is that true? The one who is greater is not the messenger, dear people of God. The one who is greater is the one who sent because he's the one who backs. He's the one who pays for you while you are going. The moment the messenger becomes greater than the sender, Nigeria, the gospel in Nigeria, the gospel in Africa, the moment the messenger becomes greater than the sender, you will now begin to defend yourself. When I sent you, lackest thou anything not when you went that means when people see you it's easy for them because of the excellency of your delivery to assume you are the sender you must remind them reminding them may sting your ego but it will lift you reminding them may look like you are demeaning your influence we live in a world where everybody wants to be influential. Everybody wants to be the celebrity. Everybody wants to be the one, you know, you want people. We live in a, 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 a social media world. Everyone wants to snap with you, to leverage on that credibility and that deception. It drives us into believing that our lives without Jesus will still make sense can i tell you the truth the bible is full of people who started with jesus and in the presence of an excelling life 
they attempted to ignore him and he respected their choice read their end a man like solomon who saw the manifested presence of god twice in his life he got to a point where he rejected jesus rejected god and then at the end of his life here's what he had to say vanity upon vanity this man had most of the things we are praying for the things we wrote in our prayer request now he had it jesus is what gives value and fulfillment if you are here and you're a preacher please listen to me no matter what you preach no matter what you say i beseech you by the mercies of god draw people's attention to jesus more than yourself you will not go down when you lift jesus as he's rising you will rise too john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee this is the protocol so every time god desires to be glorified he he gets glory by investing his glory in the son so when god wants to be lifted higher because you are the one lifting him he will lift you higher too are we together there are people who will not pay attention to jesus do you know you can come into church and with powerful worship like this, with a sound word like this, there are people who will sit down and not pay attention to anything Jesus. But let the manifestation of the Spirit start. Signs and wonders, miracles, they are suddenly alive. Let there be a moment for impartation of power and they are alive. You see the thirst and the desperation and you are tempted to ask, what did you really come to find? Did you come to seek Jesus? Or did you come to just seek his hands you really get the best of a man when you get his heart not his hands my son give me your heart keep your brain first give me your heart he says and let your let your eyes be observant or inclined to my ways Satan is comfortable with any other thing we say, provided Jesus is out of it. Any other thing we say, no matter how right or wrong, it does not threaten Satan. The moment the Jesus factor is out of it, he is comfortable. You keep preaching. You keep doing what you are doing. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus again said unto them, Koinonia, he said, follow me. You want to be made? Don't follow it. Follow me. You are not called to follow it. You will have it. All the things the Gentiles run after, provided you follow me. Follow me and I will make you. He made them fishers of men. He can make you anything. Follow me and i will make you that man of god follow me and i will make you that businessman follow me and i will open that door your concentration is on me not what i will make you uh -uh. what i will make you leave it to me your attention should be on me when you keep your eyes on jesus you will turn and look at your life and see that you have become the prayer request of many people even without knowing because you chose to follow him Tonight in this place, in this building, all the overflows outside and those following from around the nations, this is our last miracle service. And I know for sure, not by word of knowledge, but by the integrity of scripture, that there are people seated here who are number one, not serious with Jesus. Number two, have never truly made an intentional decision You've made a decision to come to church. You've made a decision to be a worker in church. Maybe you've even made a decision to have a Christian name. That is different from being genuinely interested in the things of God. Can I tell you, you will never truly find peace and find rest until Jesus becomes your savior, the one who saves you. Two, 
becomes your Lord, the authority that you submit under. Number three, he becomes your king. When this happens, you will find peace that surpasses all understanding. When this happens, you will be prepared to make the, a destiny that counts. And I say this especially because there are many young people who come to church nowadays and honestly speaking, Jesus is not their focus. They shout in church, they make noise, you would think they are serious. I'm not being sarcastic. You look at their life, there is no conversion, there is no growth, there is no intention, just loitering around the things of the spirit for the purpose of history, not transformation. History. I was there, I saw it. Oh, when that one got up from a wheelchair, I saw it. But they are never changed. And I'm sure there are such people here. There is no program they did not go for. There, there was nothing powerful that happened in 2021 that they were not witnesses. Yet they did not change. It is these ones that the Bible says ever learning. And never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Tonight more than a sermon. Tonight more than a charge. Tonight more than admiring an anointed man. Believe me when I tell you, you need Jesus. Not you want him, you need Jesus. Your life depends on it, here and in the afterlife. And I know that as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit is amplifying what I'm saying. I'm speaking to someone and saying it is time to win that war. Now you see the thing about God is he will never force you. Even at the detriment of your eternal salvation, he will give you that honor of making that choice most people again come out just because you come out and stand here does not mean you are born again please look at me everyone please look up just because you come and stand here and for some of us you recited a poem and repeated after the man of god it does not automatically mean that you were saved it has to be from your heart there are times you see people come out for an altar call and they are laughing pinching one another half of of the salvation prayer they don't say it thank you lord for saving me that's the only thing they say and then they say amen you were not born again not by the authority of scripture the bible says for with the heart with the heart not with the feet your feet can go forward while your heart is still sitting on your seat with the heart man believes unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation that is the protocol so many people come out and recite and say all of these things and then leave. And truly you know they were not saved. This is one of the reasons why you can pray for them from now till next week. They never get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because they were not saved. It's one of the reasons why people cannot receive the baptism. Because that salvation experience was not really true. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling us. I don't know about you, but he's the one who helped me. Oh. My dear people, listen to me. Without Jesus Christ, we're only acting a movie right here. Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for administration. The whole world is watching. And we're not ashamed to let them know if there is anything that is noteworthy in this life and in this ministry is because we took our attention away from ourselves and to project Jesus and he says if you are this valuable to me then I will keep you preachers let's minimize all this attracting attention to ourselves there is honor that befits priesthood and that honor should be given to the measure required but our focus should be on Jesus when our focus is on Jesus all these petty things that destroy people anger jealousy all these things it does there is no basis for it now because it is Jesus that you are protect, you are projecting. Be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy. Oh Lord, be lifted. 
If you're in ministry here, let me give you a sincere secret. Get ready for empty pews in this end time ministry if the attention remains on you. You want the Lord to bring people as many who will be saved. You must be able to serve people that meal of Jesus. Jesus, his person, Jesus as the principles of the kingdom. When your attention becomes on Jesus. When we were little children growing up, 90 to 95 percent of everything that was taught in sunday school was with respect to jesus the average child almost like a subliminal program in new john 3 16. you ask our children now john 3 16 and keep quiet and hear what they will tell you absolute nothing but ask them what is the latest app what is the latest um, phone i'm not saying those things are wrong but i'm saying something is wrong with our priority something is wrong we have to admit it this is a the first miracle is this deliverance of ignoring jesus ignoring jesus is an attack it's, it's a real attack the fact that the devil can prevail over your mind to trivialize jesus is is a sign that this attack is an as an at, 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 an advanced stage Let me make the altar call now. When we make the altar call and we lift Jesus, then with joy and gladness, we can celebrate his mighty hand to heal, to deliver. And you see, this is why miracles are very easy. Miracles are not very easy just because a man of God is anointed. Miracles become very, very easy when the attention is on Jesus. So everything that happens, it can pass through the man of God, but ultimately, Jesus is glorified. By the time the attention becomes on you, your ego is on the line, your reputation is on the line, Jesus is completely ignored, you will be forced to fabricate miracles there. And if it does not work, you carry your shame together with whatever you came with that the devil gave you, and you go back to a life of pain. But why don't you set yourself free from this burden of pain? by magnifying Jesus if someone delivers a parcel and there is something wrong with the parcel the content of the parcel and provided it was sealed and delivered you don't blame the messenger you will call the office where you made that order the interaction was between you and the office the messenger only honored the office by bringing it to you so the pressure is on the office not the messenger but when you claim to be the messenger, they now say, okay, I ordered a white shoe. I need a black one. You will have to look for a way of getting a black one immediately. And you don't have it. You are only a messenger. No man can work miracles by himself except the Lord be with him. This is what Nicodemus said to Jesus. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things. We live in a world where it's very difficult to admit that there are things you cannot do because it looks like an expression of weakness but the strength of god looks for weakness when it finds weakness it now empowers you to be strong indeed let me make an altar call jesus is calling as many today three categories of people number one those who are saying apostle i never heard the gospel this way a declaration of the love of Jesus and the need to prioritize him above all else category number one number two those who are saying I remember walking in the things of God but right now as it is I cannot say I am serious with the Lord number two number three those who are saying I don't even know the name of what I'm doing I don't know whether I'm born again or not you will join them I'm going to count one to five I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here if you are still thinking about it after this message uh, run like there's fire on the mountain all the overflows one please stand please stand please stand come Dave you will sing for me whatever you want 
to say Lord you can say come to Jesus don't let anybody keep you on your seat if you know you need to be here leave whatever you came with and come to Jesus Christ Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord God. Oh, because I'm yours. I'm yours for. you want to save Lord you can say through me whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal hallelujah I salute every one of you for coming to stand here young and old and I am safe to assume that you mean what you are saying by coming here hallelujah here's what the Bible says that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away and I'm speaking to you who is watching right now in your home your office whatever platform Jesus is speaking to you right there where you are it's time to win that war it's time to allow Jesus become the epicenter of your life this is not just recruiting individuals into the Christian faith it's not a call to a religious activity it's a genuine call to a relationship that is alive and true hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I salute every one of you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears you came here to encounter the Lord God of heaven may I request please that you lift your right hand everywhere whether you're inside outside provided you came out for the altar call lift your right hand let me tell you what it means to lift your hands to lift your hands means I will never struggle with you again to lift your hands means I relinquish ownership of my life and destiny to lift your hands means as I make this prayer, I've lost the ability to tell you no. To lift your hands is not just merely admitting that I am standing here. It's a declaration of total submission to his lordship. Now please say this after me. Jesus is right here. Let it be from the depth of your heart. There are destinies depending on this decision you're making. For some of you, it is as a result of this decision that God will use you mightily. For some of you, it's as a result of this decision that many things will begin to happen to you. For some of you, it is as a result of this decision that you will encounter the anointing in a marvelous way today. Say this after me, loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my Savior. I make Jesus my Lord. I make Jesus my King. I declare that eternal life is mine, is mine. Right, now. right now i also receive, I also receive the, abundance the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, gift of righteousness. i go forward ever and backward never i am a child of god amen. amen keep your hands lifted father thank you only you is able to draw 
these men and women, young and old, to make a declaration in honor of the sacrifice of your son Jesus. And we thank you. You have brought them out and they have made this declaration. And therefore, by the integrity of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. Amen. You are recipients of the life of God. Amen. And you go forward ever and backward never. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, please look at me. Let me just give you an instruction. Um, there are a number of you and we don't want to take more than five, ten minutes to attend to you. Here's what will happen. There are counselors and they are going to lead you just a moment before you go. You just move to my right, which is your left. All of you, please take note of the cranes so that you don't enjoy yourself. You will move in concert. And what they will do is just to appreciate you, have your details in a minute or two. Whatever they give you to feel, please do so very quickly and do so legibly. And you'll be back to your seat because we would, would start the miracle service proper um, shortly so we'll be patient and wait for you hallelujah and please do well counselors cooperate with them so that we'll make it very fast let's honor them as they go everyone please celebrate them I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours my life is yours it's yours it's yours forever it's yours it's yours whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender let it be from your heart whatever you ask of me I surrender. I surrender one more time whatever you ask of me, you ask of me I, surrender. I surrender hallelujah um, if, if they need more hands let's know so that we can send a few people please in the next 5 to 10 minutes let's have everyone back to their seats so that um, hallelujah so what will happen praise God what will happen is that we'll take the next five minutes to pray and cry for a visitation over our lives and whilst we're doing that we'll be waiting for them to come we have to honor them to come very quickly so that we'll now have that time because I already sense it's like the waters have been stirred and there will be such a mighty and marvelous move of the Spirit tonight. I want you to be very expectant, very expectant, and you will see the Lord move over your life. Before we pray, who came here from Cameroon? Cameroon. I just who came from Cameroon come out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water he -ya -he -ya -he. what do you do sir pastor. you're a pastor can I pray for you because I stood here the moment I spoke about prayer, the Lord spoke to me that there was a man of God from Cameroon. Thank you for coming first and foremost. In fact, let me do it this way. Oh dear. Aside from those who went out for an altar call, if you're a foreign delegate here, please stand. Please stand. All those who have come from anywhere outside of Nigeria, please stand. Let's celebrate them. Whether in the main auditorium, let's honor them. Give them a big, big God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? 
Hallelujah. Now, every week we have people literally coming. Some of them come and wait for days just to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very humbling what God does in our midst. And we are people who are very discerning. And we may not do this every day. We may not do this every time. But that this is an opportunity to tell you thank you for taking that time to come from wherever the Lord brought you. May the Lord bless you. This is home for you any day and any time. And I assure you by God that he who sent you here will also honor you whilst you are here. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you again. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray for this man by the power of the Holy Spirit. He came all the way from Cameroon. And I don't know what it is with him, but you have given a word for him. Sir, I pray for you in the name of Jesus and by the privilege of this grace that we have received. May you step into a new season in ministry. In the marvelous name of Jesus, you will go back into a ministry of signs and wonders. You will go back into a ministry of the accurate communication of doctrine. In the name of Jesus, sound exegesis of scripture. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the grace of God will be mighty upon you. I pray that God will raise men and women who will stand by you even financially. In the name of Jesus, that there will be no limits to the exploits that you will do in Christ. Let the blessings that is upon this house rest on you. And everything you have seen here, go back and reproduce it in your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Please, let's rise. We're going to pray. Ta -da 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 -da. Ta da 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 Ta da 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 Prayer point number one. Father, everything that is not a representation of the life of Christ in and around my life, I declare that it must live right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. The Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, it declares that it will be uprooted. Pray. All the overflows, pray. Outside, pray. Following online, pray. Everything that is not the planting of Christ, it must be uprooted right now everything that is not the planting of christ pray manifesting as ill health manifesting as some infirmity and some disease in your body manifesting as occurrences and patterns in your life lift your voice and pray let it come on that judgment right now Hallelujah. Second prayer point, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. I believe that should be the scripture. 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. Yes. Please read with me. One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers out of the land of Egypt. Who advanced them? The Lord. People don't just go forward in their lives. You don't just go forward because you are tired of where you are. There is a hand that can push a man from Egypt 
to the land of promise you're going to pray may that hand that hand that can push men mysteriously but surely may that hand shift you to the next level lift your voice and pray someone pray it was the lord that advanced moses and aaron advance my life oh god in the name of jesus let me encounter by your marvelous hand the grace that advances me the grace that advances me go ahead and pray advancement all wise advancement all wise advancement all wise Declare your advancement in the name of Jesus. Let this unction come upon you today and push you and shift you to a new dimension, a new level of spiritual experience. the lord that advanced hallelujah hallelujah i was i was over in zaria um just midweek down to the weekend before traveling for some other meetings and then coming here and when i went to zaria as as i I became very emotional as I was about to enter the city because I could see places where I once walked praying and prophesying and declaring that in the name of Jesus this vision will grow and will bless the world I could see places and I stood there and I said my God only a fool will say in his heart there is no God I saw the things that would look like a dream or some ambitious project happen at the instance of the hand of God with a level of godlike ease it has to be God are we together now I'm saying that to still establish this prayer don't ask is it difficult for God to lift me honestly if you say that you don't know God this God that we're talking about in one day he fed a whole nation not a family a nation and there was a man who said even if god will open the windows of heaven this cannot be possible he repeated that miracle when he fed five thousand people with five loaf and two fish one more time i'd like you to pray lord i want to leave this current position i am grateful for where you have brought me but there is more for me in christ there is more for me in destiny i obtain grace tonight that will advance me go ahead and pray It was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and brought your fathers out of Egypt, the place of bondage. Someone is praying, take me to higher grounds, oh God, higher levels spiritually, higher levels financially multiplying your influence and your good hand upon my life for the sake of your kingdom in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ isaiah chapter 49 next prayer point Isaiah chapter 49 we'll begin our reading from verse 24 please pay attention Isaiah 49 shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive be delivered you know who a lawful captive is 
A lawful captive is one who is in bondage legally. Are we together now? Yes. Lawful captive. That means there was a legitimate ground upon which the realm of the spirit found access to your life, your liberty, your family. There is such a thing as a lawful captive. But the Bible says, is there a possibility in the dealings of God with men that even those who are lawful captives, that means Satan has an authorized basis he can stand to say, no, 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 no. I have on a legitimate ground. There is grounds to oppress this family. There is grounds to oppress this destiny. There is grounds to oppress this ministry. But the Bible says, even at that, in the dealings of God with men, is there a possibility for lawful captives to be delivered? 25. It says, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. It, we, it's important for us to know who is talking. Because if it is not the Lord, if he says, Thus saith an angel, we're in trouble. Because angels are limited. But thus saith this sovereign authority, regardless the legal basis, there is still a possibility. He says, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's telling you how he will do it. Are we together now? Come Dave, let me use you. Who, who else will come? Come a doctor, let me use two of you. Now watch this. Let's assume, stand here. Since we're wearing white and white, you come. Watch this. Let's assume that this man that i'm a terrorist are we together now and then i hold this guy because for some reason he gave me legal grounds to hold him are we together now his family may not be able to help him but then let's assume for instance that no no let me not use terrorism let's assume that um this man was a criminal are we together now and say i'm the head of prisons or the correctional center and i've kept him there and this is the president of that territory in as much as there was a legal ground this guy was ordered from court to be in jail for something he did is that true the bible says there is still a possibility the possibility is not when they have already said there is no bail for you yet at a certain time the president there is something called presidential pardon am i right on that this is what God is saying. That although your family is where they are, because your grandfathers, the devil was minding his business, your grandfathers came and said, please, come and help us farm. And the devil said, for what in return? He said, help them please. He said, for the destiny of my children and my children's children. And the devil said, I will protect you from war, but make sure you serve me. Now the missionaries came and brought the gospel. And now you decided that I will not serve the devil again. He will not fold his arms and wash you. There is a basis for that oppression. But the Bible says, I will contend. <laughs> Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Have you known God as a warrior? Go and read your Bible. Hmm. Moses, he said, stand still. This fight is not your own. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. God can fight. Believe me. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen. Two angels. Not God. Two angels. From heaven. With hailstone. They wiped a whole people. 
overnight two angels we don't even know their ranking in the angelic kedah two angels i'm saying this because he's the one who will arise there are matters in families that are not allowing people go forward and just when the devil thinks he's getting away with it again like he has done before give us that scripture let's finish i will contend so back to my example now i'm holding this guy i'm holding doctor and keeping him in one place you will not move forward to manifest your destiny but i forgot that even me i am a citizen of a nation and then the president comes and says whatever it is i use my office remember that the position that you have that authorized you to keep this person was an appointment and the president both me and him two of us are subject to the president's decision are we together now yes so he comes to grant presidential pardon and then he does not just make that order from his place his villa he comes by himself and enters the correctional center and goes to the room and picks this man and i watch with pain as he leaves him i desire to keep him except that the lord strong and mighty i'm saying this because there are people god himself will reach down to your foundation and pull you out believe me when i tell you this reach down to your foundation once and for all listen let me tell you a little secret i don't i usually at the end of the year i take out time to just rest and make sure that you know i just have my little time to rest and prepare but a group of people came from my village and they said look you need to come there is fire on the mountain and you are blessing the whole world i said you people should leave me this is the end of the year i want to rest he said no you have to come and i i sat down when i looked at what was happening i said in as much as i love everybody in truth and without bias i love my own people too i told them i said you know what i'm coming and believe me let me tell you what i'm going to do by the spirit of god i'm going in partnership with the battalion of heaven there are there are things there are things that need to be settled there are all these all these wishing see the devil is not stupid there are rules of engagement just desiring to be free does not bring freedom there are rules of engagement are we together i came here with a burden tonight because as I prayed, I asked the Lord, I said, Father, please, let people not come and, and cry and say amen and fall and stand up only to return back into frustration. But you see, listen, let me tell you this. You have to believe God tonight and be serious. Believe him and open up your heart and be determined that I'm not going back the way I came. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, before Jesus arrived, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. There are men of God here, you make up your mind, I'm not going back with my head empty, no way. I traveled so far to come and receive an unction that will change my life. Business people, make up your mind that I'm not coming here to, to, to go back and live a life of struggle, living from hand to mouth, pillar to post, up today, down tomorrow. even the lawful captive and so he comes to pick him and goes with him and there is nothing the devil can do about it do you know why because the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and the walls and all they that dwell therein so you are going to pray one prayer you are going to give a prophetic red card if i will use that expression to everything that is antichrist 
buried whether in foundations inheritance i like you to make a declaration in the name of jesus i'm cutting away from ordinances and handwritings speaking against the purposes of christ in and through my life go ahead and pray Brante parikato shaligata parakato skatia. Embrante skote shalaka praski badakato. Pray. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Hallelujah. I'm ready to pray now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let me beseech you whether you are an usher or not. If someone is under the anointing close to you, please help them. Let's be very, very fast so that we'll trust God to do much tonight. Hallelujah. I really want to take out time and minister this deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will be shocked and surprised to see what happens to you. Let me start tonight with families where nobody rises. This is what I want to start with tonight. In truth, there are families where no matter how diligent you are no matter how hard working you are it looks like there is a demonic embargo you see people travel abroad and return back after 10 years in shame they study to phd some of them even become professors yet they cannot feed their families why because there are horns that have lifted up themselves against judah and against jerusalem now i want to pray by the power that resides in the Christ I decree and declare please bring them out very quickly everyone here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium inside and outside whose life and family is under the yoke of this wicked spirit that will not allow you rise at the count of three you're going to shout the name Jesus and at Abakatosh Ketebakata at the shout of that name that fire will fall from heaven and set ablaze everything that is antichrist are you ready now thank you father one two three shout jesus i command every yoke every altar by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus every family that will not be allowed to rise we bring judgment against those forces in the name of jesus bring them out by the power that raised christ from the dead be judged now be judged now be judged now wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord bring them out please I'm still praying son of man what seest thou and he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Jerusalem so that no one doth lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters I am still praying every family here that is a victim of the covenant of ancestry 
Shabrente ke bakatos, ebreke paskadiata, bekeni kaposiata. Covenants of ancestry, 